Good afternoon, everybody. Everybody have a good, a good time here at ARC? Yes? I can hear yes. Woo! So my name is Benny Charney. I'm the CEO and founder of OpSwot. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank the ARC conference and the management for the opportunity to present here. It's the first time that we are presenting here at the ARC conference. So thank you. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, the team. So, uh, so before I begin, maybe let me introduce myself because it's my first time to ARC, right? So this is me several, uh, like 18 years ago when I founded the company OpSWOT. And when I founded the company OpSWOT, then I'm, it's, it, 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 it was a bootstrap. So I, I was pretty much doing everything. I was the coder, I was the sales guy, I was the bagel guy. And I also did the dishes, everything needed. So uh, pretty much I was the VP R&D. I was the chief marketing officer. I was everything all together. Though since then, 18 years and growing and growing and growing, uh, the company has grew to uh, 21 locations around the world, close to 600 employees. And now there is a chief revenue officer. There is a head of product. There is a chief financial officer. And now we have more time first to come here and present here. Also have some more time with some hobbies, travel around the world, uh, spend the time with my family, my, my dog. So that's, uh, that's a bit about uh, myself. So um, I, our company, we focus on critical infrastructure protection. And our first, uh, uh, first interaction with critical infrastructure protection was in 2012. By the way, cameras, uh, do you want me here or on the stage? Where do you guys prefer me? On the stage here is fine. Great, I'll stay here. So uh, thank you, thank you guys, thank you Dan, thank you Gary. Uh, so uh, so our first path into critical infrastructure was in 2011 when we first built a kiosk, a kiosk that helped you transfer data to and from AirGap networks. Really great success. However, since then, we saw and we learned. Uh, at least about our perspective about critical infrastructure protection needs. And we developed our own philosophy and methodology about protecting uh, the world critical infrastructure. So if you've seen, if you've seen uh, in the previous presentation by Seed and others that there are still many breaches in critical infrastructure protection. Uh, CSIS, anybody knows this website? Anybody knows this website? See, I, I mean, anyway, for the ones of you not interested, actually I have the presentations ready. I'll be very happy to go and shoot you the slides and uh, at the end of this presentation I have my email so if somebody wants there is a link. So this website tracks critical infrastructure protection cyber events and every month since 2006 and every month you see various sometimes several dozens of cybersecurity incidents on critical infrastructure and damages occurred. Some of them made the news, such as Colonials uh, and, and, and others over. Many others did not make the news for various reasons, not because they've been um, uh, uh, smaller in magnitude, just because they didn't make the news. And now we try to, uh, to look at uh, other aspects, such as fines. And again, for the ones of you interested in the site, so this website tracks public NERC SIP fines, which is millions of dollars of NERC SIP fines on critical infrastructure. Some of them are recent. Whenever we look at the health cares, these are HIPAA fines. And by the way, not every regulation, there are many regulations, not every of them, every regulation is connected to a fine. Some of that are regulations that are simply a policy. Now, the question is, why is that happening? Why we have critical infrastructure, right? We have something that is so important and with so much money invested. Uh, so why there are breaches and why there are fines? So the next several slides, I'll, I'll provide you some evidence from the market why it's happening. And, and after that, at least I'll provide my view this uh, Opsot company view about how the future is going to look like. So, 
So uh, let's first look at the networks. This is a, a, a diagram I took from Siemens. And this diagram I took here from Cisco. Both of them are describing a critical network. Anybody can tell me what's common to these two diagrams? What's so common about the cyber the networks of critical infrastructure? What you can, can you tell me about them? Bunch of lines, really complex, right? Really good answer, bunch of lines. It's a really, really complex network. It's not really a flat network you see all the computers on. You have the IT, you have the OT, you have air gap, sometimes multiple air gap networks, right? What else? Anybody? Protocols, right? Levels, multiple levels. Also different protocols we need to go and support, right? So the networks are extremely complex, multiple protocol to support. Now let's go to compliance mandates. So this is compliant mandates. Actually, you got a list here of many of them for critical infrastructure. And whenever you go to the DOT, it's really getting, really, really getting complex. So there are many compliance mandates. So many to a point that it's really, really hard to track. So many compliance mandates. Go figure it out. Go train a workforce to go and meet and adhere to so many compliance mandates. Next, let's go to technologies. So. Uh, this, this, is, this list is taken from AV test, so still a lot of ways to go and prevent and detect threats on networks is antivirus, whether it's next-gen antivirus, AI next antivirus, signature-based antivirus, traditional antivirus, you name it. So this company, AV test, is based in Germany, and what they do is that every month, what they do, they provide a report of testing the efficacy of antiviruses. Now. There is, this is a dynamic check of antiviruses. Dynamic means, anybody knows what is dynamic check of antivirus? It means you take a file, you let the file explode on the computer, and then you let the antivirus detect whether it's a virus or not. Okay, so it's a big difference between that and a static one that what you do, just let the file go, and then the antivirus needs to predict whether this file is gonna be malicious or not. Really, really big difference. Now. So whenever you look into that, there is the offline and then there is the online. Anybody can, 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 can identify a pattern here? Whenever it's offline, the efficacy decreases significantly to a point that it's sometimes 50% in a dynamic fashion. And critical infrastructure has sometimes many air gap networks to a point that the efficacy of a very, very common technology is not there, okay? And some should say, oh, this is 20, September 2021, so it's pretty old, it's the mid of the COVID, so let's look at March 2022, it's not much better, <laughs> okay? And by the way, you can look at the list, you can get a bunch of them, and by the way, some antivirus that was great in March would be terrible in April, and it's changed, by the way, daily, and we do some tests around that. Now, this is a dynamic test, which is supposed to be actually, <laughs> this is the great side. So we have a website called MediDefender Cloud. It's a free website, and what we do, we, we analyze millions of viruses on this website. You can go check it out on your, on your mobile. It's free, MediDefender Cloud. It takes a file and scan it with dozens of antiviruses, do all, some other stuff to that. And we do test the top 10,000 malware in a static way, and whenever you check files statically before they explode, it's actually the, the, the results are even worse than dynamic. So to a point, it can go down to 6% efficacy. To a point, it's like there's no point to put one, or you need to put many there. So many there to a point you get to a really accurate precision of detecting malware. Very basic thing, malware, right? Now, some should say, Let's use a sandbox. <laughs> Let's use a sandbox, right? There is a sandbox to God predict what's there. So first, sandbox for OT does not really exist, right? There is no sandbox for OT. Who manufactures sandbox for OT? Number two, malware evades sandbox. So it's, you can't really rely on that technology because there's so many evasion technologies to evade the sandbox. However, Sandbox is extremely slow, so if you have a lot of data to go and transfer, it's not really effective. It's really great for model analysis, though not an effective 
cybersecurity tool. Now, we're still on technologies, right? Why cyber breaches are happening on critical infrastructure? So, right, so networks are extremely complex, so many compliance mandates, right? And technologies are not there, right? Now, let's look at another issue, the recent presidential order. Anybody read that, by the way, White House presidential order? So, so it's calling first to identify where files, where installer has been manufactured or where something was originated to a point that a technology like that does not exist. There is not really technologies out there that can tell you accurately where something was manufactured, okay? Now, let's say that you want to go and train your cybersecurity workforce. Anybody knows, can guess what is that? Anybody can get certification. All of those are 423 different cyber security training and certification that you can train your workforce. All of them. <laughs> so now, anybody can answer which one you're gonna go and train your critical infrastructure, your IT folks to protect your critical infrastructure. It, it's really interesting. Actually, we're building a doc documentary now. If somebody is interested, let me know. On cybersecurity, again, it's not commercial. It's going to be published in ABC next year. And we're interviewing different CISOs of critical infrastructure. I mean, what's the best cybersecurity training certification if you would? And we, we hear completely different answers. Completely different answers. And to a point that there is no, actually there are three out of there that are touching critical infrastructure. Again, touching only the OT sections. There are three out of them. Though nothing is really, that there is not really a slam dunk solution. How to train IT cybersecurity folks in a critical infrastructure network. Now, let's look at some, the products that are out there. And I'm pretty, I am apologize in advance if I'm offending some. It's not my, my point is not to offend. However, my point is just to provide the status of the cybersecurity market. So these are usability that we see in the market of, of uh, uh, cybersecurity products. Now, we have that while our customers and some of them dealing with cybersecurity I used to see something like that, or something like that. Now, put that aside. So we said about, hey, so many compliance mandate. Go figure out how to use this product. And let's be realistic here. You have to get make a cybersecurity decision right now on the fly how to make a cybersecurity decision whenever it takes you a week or a month to really study your cybersecurity products or to install. Well, to install also in other months. So that's another big issue, to install and to operate cybersecurity products on critical, and, and by the way, there are great products out there. So just go train and go figure them out, how to go and set them up and how to go and use them. So, loom and gloom, right? So situation is extremely terrible, right? So there are tons of breaches on critical infrastructure, and why is that happening? The network are complex, there are tons of compliance mandate, the Technologies are not there. The usability is not there, right? <laughs> so how the future is going to look like, again, from our point of view, and how do we see that, kind of, from our point of view, how things could actually look better. And we see some tractions and transition in the field. Some of them has been discussed by Seed, actually, previously. I'm going to go and touch them. So number one is that Seed was talking about IT and OT conversion, right? What is IT and OT conversion? It's really touching the fact that the network are extremely complex. So there is the IT portion and there is the OT portion. So the answer for a real cybersecurity solution here is not another product in a specific layer. The market needs a platform, a platform that has installation in the IT section, in the OT section, have different management capabilities on the IT side, on the OT side, in the cloud piece, it's not a single product. So we are facing something that is not a single product. It's not like a network. Let's take a net, network monitoring here. We 
are good. No, it's not the case. It's not another antivirus or another firewall we need to install. We need to think like a platform, a platform that touch each part of the complex critical infrastructure network. The platform supposed to try, help you transfer files, devices into and out of the network. The platform needs to go and help you with everything related to your compliance, compliance mandate. It's a pretty complex platform whenever you think about that. Number two, whenever we look at usability, usability needs to be OT-centric and also extremely easy to use to a point that any operator should look like, something like that. This product does not exist, or something as easy and beautiful as that. Something easy to use. And speaking more about usability, the usability need to support each one of the compliance mandates. So whenever you look at the usability or whenever you examine a cybersecurity product, the usability need to adhere to the compliance mandate that we have. Let, now, let's talk about technologies and the future of critical infrastructure protection technologies. So number one is content, content disarm and reconstruction. Anybody knows what is CDR, content disarm and reconstruction? Anybody knows what is that technology? Wow. Okay, so CDR is technology that is not built on detection. It assumes all the files are viruses. It regenerates them. So, so imagine that you have a critical infrastructure network and you block any executable in. Anytime that network is receiving any file, such as a Word document or an image or a video, the file is actually going to be deleted. A new file is going to be generated that looks like the original file, just without the bad stuff, because the file is generated with, in a secure environment. Actually, the hashes are going to be different. Now, uh, this technology is, is, is more used in government. Uh, also, is, is used in critical infrastructure protection in uh, Japan, Australia, and Israel. So we are kind of, we are, we are very involved in, uh, in, in, in working on those and also in the, um, the DOD, so, uh, however, not widely in critical infrastructure networks. So this is something that uh, needs to be pushed. If, even if by the regulations, I can see the market is moving into this direction by regulations. Up until this happens, my recommendation is really looking at this technology. We are not the only company manufacturing that, however, highly recommended. Multi-AV scanning. So we've seen that antivirus efficacy is not high in offline. We've seen that antivirus efficacy is not perfect. We've seen that antivirus efficacy is really poor whenever it comes to static scanning. So whenever you have anything about that, whenever we see that, we see that the future is multi-AV scanning, even if it's, um, you're seeing marketing messages by, 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 uh, by different antivirus companies is the way is to really scan with many. The more, the merrier. Now it's a matter of budget, uh, pretty much a ma 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 matter of budget. We see uh, as, uh, as well technologies to go and detect the country of origin and the vendors. Another technology that we see is coming up in the future and uh, being adopted more widely is file-based vulnerabilities. So we see a lot of vulnerability scanning. You see a lot checking vulnerabilities on active. It's based on version check. However, whenever we look at vulnerabilities and breaches, we need to go and check a vulnerability before you install it on the PLC, before you install it on the engineering station, not after. And a file-based vulnerability means that you can go and check whether the files has the potential to include vulnerabilities to your network before it happens. And lastly, development, development of OT sandbox and malware analysis in OT and malware analysis environments. This is also extremely key to put that together. Again, for the ones taking pictures, uh, you know, take my email at the last, I'll be happy to go and send you a copy of this uh, presentation. Whenever it's go to training, it's clear that the market needs a single training platform for critical infrastructure protection. Something that can train 
and certify any IT professional what does it mean to protect a critical infrastructure network that includes everything needed, all of the compliance mandates, what is a critical infrastructure, what is PLCs, what is everything around it. So the market is calling for that. And the market is calling for that not only by OpsWat. I think it's calling from partnership with all of the industry, something that we're working on right now. Or it's calling for partnership with each one of the critical infrastructure providers, all of them. I mean, the more the merrier, the ones that are willing to go in, because the cybersecurity philosophy for different parts is different, and also experience that each one of these vendors uh, accumulated is key here to go and prevent the next big hack. With that, I'd like to invite each one of you to join our first critical infrastructure protection mobile lab. Uh, before we build this, uh, actually we built uh, the whole idea to go and come up with this uh, uh, cyber trailer, came during, during COVID, we kept, whenever we saw that our customers cannot come visit us at the booth or the trade shows, we said, okay, we'll bring the lab to their facility. Actually, we have several, st we have three station labs, we have one, one here in Tampa, we have um, another one in, uh, in, in Asia Pacific in Vietnam, another one in Israel, so we can't really fly, it's, it's really hard to fly uh, uh, people around, so we had also one that is mobile, it came out, and now it's parked here, outside in the parking lot, so if the weather, it's also it has AC, for the ones of you that are concerned, so, uh, <laughs> also at night we'll serve some beers next to it, it goes together, it goes, <laughs> goes well together. Um, Though it's something that I really would like. I mean, we built it to a point that it's not necessarily to sell our stuff. It's very much to train uh, critical infrastructure protection experts about there is actually there is a whole lab and PLCs and lights and some of the builders of this actually exist here in this in this room. So, hey Turner, great job. Um, so and let's 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 see that. Thank you for that. Uh, again, for the ones of you interested, actually, we can bring the training session to your uh, up until the, the global uh, cybersecurity training with all will be ready. Uh, we can go and thank. And with that, I'd like to thank you again. Thank the R conference for the opportunity to speak here and to sponsor this event. Thank you so much.